Hey there friends, what's up, Tiki, and welcome to Stillwater, a short novel game where uh, we play as a uh, detective and we need to investigate some uh, some weird mysteries and also apparently a family curse. So yeah, I hope you will enjoy this and let's just get into it. This is a work of fiction. The resemblance of any real life people is purely coincidental. Uh, this game contains uh, depictions of horror, major themes, violence, and strong language. Viewer discretion is advised. So don't come for me. Caretaker, I'm sorry, but I can't stay here anymore, Nina. I feel like I'm going crazy. Calm down, if we can just talk it out. So many strange things keep happening after another. Every day there is this damn dripping sound. I thought it was just something leaking at first, but I check every faucet. Every ceiling, every pipeline and still, still I hear it everywhere, constantly echoing in my ears. Huh. Oh, but the water. I find random pools of water just appearing out of nowhere, just like the dripping. But it's at night. It's a night where it comes. Huh. I don't know if it's my paranoia, but I swear I could hear footsteps walking along the hallway, walking on the pools of water. They walk, and they walk, upstairs, then downstairs. Upstairs and upstairs, okay, I got you. <laughs> and it goes on and on and on and on like that. But somehow it does come to an end, and it ends, all in the front of your grand grandfather's room. I know that this is a lot, but you have to believe me. No matter how many times I clean, it just won't end. I can't stay here any longer, I'm sorry Nina. Oh, it's okay. I understand. Thank you for taking care of my grandfather. Nina, please listen to me. I don't know what's happening around here, but... The woman on the phone consciously looks around before speaking again in a hushed tone. What? Something terrible is rocking through this house? <gasps> is that our grandfather and is that the shadow? That's weird. I don't know what it is, but please, as soon as you get back, take your grandfather and just leave this place. Nina, huh? <laughs> I can't just leave, that's my home. Please, Nina, this place, it's not safe. I don't know what you saw, but I can just leave things like that. Caretaker. What the freak is that? It's my home. It's my home. Okay. Dinner, 7 a.m. Amid a fo foggy morning, there sits a man by the corner of a boat. I don't see any man. <laughs> Where is he? He drinks black coffee and, depending on his mood, occasionally orders a donut. And today it was just black coffee. Oh, Hugo. Oh my god. He looks like he's seen a lot of things. I swear I've never seen that amount of paperwork in my life. A freaking mountain worth of it. You're a valuable member of our team, Hugo. Classic. What can I say? A classic. My foot. I'm starting to believe that I was bamboozled into joining their agency. Huh. The coffee. Hugo Laurent, age 30, takes a good look at his cup of joe and chugs it all in one sitting. He then continues to grumble to himself about last night's grueling work at the office. I really need to find a different job. As he contemplates his poor life choices, he looks out towards the early mist. There was something inherently terrifying about the fog to him, how it engulfs everything and nothing. Even if it disappears, it always leaves behind traces. Proof of it remaining. Even in a quaint little town like this, I can't even run from my fate, I guess. So much paper. Hugo finally stares at the compiled newspaper clippings he put together. Some of them from recent events, but mainly all were past headlines of missing person cases. No matter how many times I see this, it's still just as hard to look at. Fixating case after case, he can't help but remind himself that there is a reason for all of this. And all the personal reasons. Seeing strange things come with a price. In the end, I'm the one doing this to myself. Sounds rough, mind if I join. An annoyingly familiar voice interrupts his train of thoughts. He slowly looks up to see the one responsible, although reluctantly. I don't know if I said that word correctly, but oh well. Good morning, Hugo. Hugo scowls and turns away from him. 
He then gathers the files and shoves it back into the binder. Meanwhile, the tall man takes this as an initiative and sits at the opposite end of the room. He greets the waitress passing by and orders himself the hefty body breakfast special with an extra plate. As usual, the waitress is happy to oblige and goes back to the counter to rely his order. The man then looks back at Hugo. He sees the empty cup and uh, the now jumbled newspaper clippings, all the, all the while Hugo is trying to ignore him. He's quite annoyed. <laughs> you really should eat something with the black coffee. Not ordering any donuts today. I'm fine, Noah. I'm just not in the mood, okay? Not even a little? Huh. There is a momentary silence between them before Noah disturbs it once more. Well, too bad for you. I ordered a big breakfast for the two of us. Two? Oh my god, that looks so delicious. <laughs> As if the world could grace Noah with an even more perfect punchline the food arrives. Why the hell did you order for the two of us? Just eat what you want to eat. Don't worry about me. Wow, this looks so delicious, right, Hugo? It does, it does. Are you even listening to me? Come on, we both know that if you don't eat now, who knows when you will and I'm not about to let you faint again. Oh my god, you faint. <laughs> so, open wide. Huh. Noah de Leon, age 27, a nature-born charmer is just uh, as equally persuasive as he's threatening. <laughs> oh my god, this looks so good. With a pensive look, Hugo finally gives in and is the generous spoonful without further complaints. Hugo, it's good. Right? Good food will always help cheer you up. Exactly! Damn him. I got swept away again. Oh, by the way, the chief will be out for a business trip. She mentioned it will be for a couple of days. When did she tell you this? I didn't hear anything about it. Hmm, yesterday I think? Yesterday she told me to sort out the cabinets yesterday. She didn't mention anything about a business trip. I guess it was a pretty sudden one. Well, I mean, she did tell me to tell you. And lucky me, I know where to go every morning. Huh. You know what? I'm not surprised anymore. Well, what do you want to do? We technically have the day off. I'm gonna head back to the office. There's a couple of boxes I didn't get a chance to sort out. In that case, I'll come with you. Why? Could you just rest for the day? And pass up the opportunity to get to know you better? Quit it. After the enlightening banter, the two of them finish their breakfast, pay for their meals and head to Hugo's car. As Noah opens the door to the passenger seat, he notices a bloodhound sleeping inside. <gasps> a dog! <laughs> the big door stares at the sound of the car opening and lazily stares at Noah. Ah, I'm sorry, big guy. He then closes the door while trying not to make too much noise to disturb its occupant. Colby. At the sound of his name, his heavy lidded eyes slowly pick to see who calls for him. It is his one and only partner. He's human. This is adorable. <laughs> oh my god. And if finally realizing who he is uh, or where he is, the old bloodhound tears off from his sleep, pounces at Hugo and proceeds to wag his tail uncontrollably. Bark. <laughs> Good morning again. Oh my god, he's so happy seeing his dog. Had a nice nap? Colby, 8 years old. Hugo's most faithful and loving partner in crime has the biggest tendency to just sleep all over the place. Noah, who is witnessing all of this from the back of the seat, chuckles to himself. He is amazed and slightly uh, defeated at Hugo's sudden surge of energy. Huh, it doesn't matter how many times I try, when it comes to boosting up his moods, no one can beat Colby. I mean, who can? Agency, 7.50 am. The three headed back to the office, the space just the same as Hugo left in. A decent organized mess. To his credit for the amount of boxes he painstakingly went through, he believes he did a fair job. What are those words for fact's sake? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Albeit could have been better. Wow, you really outdid yourself, Hugo. It looks... Oh, shit. <laughs> ah, shut it, will you? will you? I said it was gonna get to it. Oof. <laughs> Thanks, boy. <laughs> it's adorable. Before Hugo could continue to give uh, dessert head pets, he noticed someone. A woman stands timidly peering outside from the storefront. The woman appears a bit frantic. 
disheveled and wearing ill-fitted clothes, she appeared to be distressed about something. When she finally makes eye contact with Hugo, he, she immediately rushes in. Hi, I am sorry. I know that the close sign is up, but I saw you come in and I... Are you alright, miss? I need your help. My grandfather, he... Before she continues, Noah swiftly intervenes. It's okay, we'll hear what you have to say. So please, why don't you take a seat? Noah gestures to one of the empty chairs. The poor woman hesitates for a moment before heavily uh, sighting in relief. She then walks towards the corner of the room and sits on the sofa. Can you start off by telling us your name? Um, I'm sorry for earlier. My name is Nina Mortimer. <gasps> so is the girl from the beginning. I need help watching over my grandfather tonight. Watching over your grandfather? Yes. I'm sorry, Miss Mortimer, but I don't quite understand. Is he in danger? I'm afraid he is. Huh. Miss Mortimer, if that is the case, wouldn't contacting the police be better? No. I've tried requesting their help, but they'll give me the same answer. There is nothing they can do about it. If only I knew who Luis was. Luis? Nina fidgets at the name. She looks to the side before reaching out for her bag for an, an antique letter. My grandfather, he received a cryptic message the other day. It didn't come with an address or the name of the sender. However, the only thing I did pick up was that name. As she hands over the letter, Hugo notices her hand slightly shaking. Whether lies in this note must have shaken her this badly. Delicately, Hugo removes the corner of the envelope and unfolds it. At first glance, it seems like any normal written message. A person named Louise asking uh, the other, Henry, to come meet him by the lake at midnight, needing to share something important with him. However, what's uh, early stirring about this letter is not the message itself. Rather, at the bottom of the page, a sentence far more disturbing is written. I am coming for you, Henry. Huh. Were there any letters like this? Yes, a few of them. I thought it was a sick joke at first, but this one, this one was different. Up until now, I never heard of anyone by that name. Not a relative or family friend. But they clearly know who my grandfather is. If I don't do something about this, I lose, I lose him too. Just by uttering the words alone, Nina breaks down. Hiding away her tears, tricked face, she began to quietly sob to herself. As an act of comfort, Colby sits closely to Nina while Noah fetches tissue for her. Hugo, on the other hand, is puzzled. Huh, he's thinking of something. This is very, this very well could uh, have been a prank, but she seems certain. Certain that whoever or whatever this Louis person is, they are coming. Yep. Do you want more tissues? I'll do it. I'll take on your case. For a moment, Cyrus fills the, fills the room. Only stairs are directed at Hugo until Nina finally stands up and walks towards him. You, you'll take it? Hugo simply nods. Thank you, thank you. You don't, know much how, you don't know how much this means to me. We are glad to help, Miss Nina. Nina is fine. Well, Nina, we'll do our best. Nina slightly smiles at Hugo before reaching into her bag once more and taking out a note. This is my address. Uh, that's a four. Nope. 9970 Church Street. Okay, I'll be sure to greet you once you get there, detective. She politely bows, and bows once more before heading to her car and drives back home. Once out of sight, Hugo turns to look at his cluttered desk. Still messy, but presentable. I guess I have to sort this out later again. Yep. Car, 7.30 p.m. For the ongoing downpour of the quiet hums of the car, they sit in silence. Still miles off from their destination, Hugo constantly checks the uh, rearview mirror. Noah, who usually chats his uh, ear off by now, sits completely still. He looks out to the passing streetlights, reserved and distant. Hugo, hmm. Hey, you're a lot quiet, quieter than usual. What's wrong? Huh, this is a surprise. Have you been looking at me, Hugo? No, you idiot. You usually just talk a lot, that's all. So, do you miss me talking a lot? <laughs> I don't think so. Just say it. I didn't want to offend Nina earlier, so I kept quiet until she finished. 
But it's her last name that caught me off guard. Huh? Have you heard about the Mortimer's? They're pretty distinguished family. Oh, we are <laughs> very rich. Well, they used to be. What do you mean? They've been struck with so many tragedies then that over time people begin to believe they were cursed or something. Huh. Okay. Every other year, I would see a headline on the local news about one of the family members' death. And you know what's strange? All of them have been labeled as accidents. No foul play, no nothing. Just another unfortunate event for the family. Maybe I understand why she wouldn't go to the police. She probably thought they'd uh, perceive her as paranoid or hysterical. Or worse, crazy. Hmm. I can't imagine all of this for Nina. And most of all, who knows what we'll find there. Is that why you decided to come with me? Well, partially. I'm more worried about you though, huh? Think of it this way. I'm the appointed driver. When you decide to do some pretty reckless shit, I'll be there to drive you to the local hospital. <laughs> oh, besides, two are better than one. Exactly. <laughs> I was fine with Colby coming with me. Well, have you heard that three is better than two? Oh. <laughs> Mortimer Estate, 6 p.m. Oh, nice house. Passing through countless dirt roads and street cliffs, the estate revealed itself beyond the evergreen. Needles and tucked away from praying eyes, it stands tall, looming from a distance. Hugo and Noah could only gaze at the sheer scale of the manor as they parked uh, a descent to Nina's car. Wow, and to think she came all this way just to request us? It took us more than a couple of hours to get here. Hmm, maybe she really di didn't have a choice. What do you mean? Come on, she's waiting for us. Immediately after exiting the driver's seat, a sudden sharp pain weighed heavy on Hugo's chest. Grasping tightly at his coat, he begins to gasp for air. His gaze hazes as he leans closer to the car. Uh, are you okay? <laughs> like a fish drowned out from sea, he desperately heaves. But this ache he harbors spares in comparison to a pain far more excruciating. Is it the house? No, something far more sinister. He fears it. Someone is watching him. A piercing gaze to fix on him, like leering at a bug and waiting to strike. I'll never forgive you. Huh? What the hell? Damn it, already. I need to hurry or else. <gasps> uh, are you alright? Why are you so angry? Noah calls out to him, snapping him out of his fixated trance. Kabe manages his head against Hugo winning with concern over his partner's well-being. Did, did you hear that just now? Hear what? That voice! It was so close to my ear. I... Is everything alright? Oh, I'm fine. Don't mind me. I'm just a bit winded out from the trip, that's all. I'd be happy to make you coffee at every least. Uh, if it's no trouble. No, not at all. Huh. Is the least I can do. Once again, this subtle anest... This subtle unnessiness from Nina surfaces. But before Hugo could get a chance to look further into it, she walked off towards the front porch without saying another word. Are you sure you're alright? You sounded like you were choking earlier. I said I'm fine. Besides, we're already here. We can back out now. Listen to me. I think you should. Noah abruptly cuts his lecture short as he notices Nina stopping by the front door. She stands there silently as if contemplating something. I, I know this may sound rude, but I didn't get the chance to know your names. Well, you are pretty out of it when you walked in. I'm really sorry about that. No worries. This is Detective Hugo Laurent. <laughs> I'm gonna say Laurent. His assistant Colby. And I'm his second assistant, Noah D D Leon. Ha, it seems so surreal, just like a cartoon. <laughs> <laughs> Nina meekly smiles before turning away from them. I, I haven't been quite honest with you, Detective Laurent. Huh? Just like before, as if carefully choosing her next words, she decided that in these situations, words are not enough. You'll see for yourself what I mean. And with that, Nina enters the house, leaving the tree to follow behind. Hugo is about to enter through the foyer, foyer when he feels a thug on his arm. Don't forget that what I told you. If something happens, let me know right away. 
he'll be the first to know. And with that, Noah releases his grip on Hugo. They proceed to, to head in, not knowing what awaits them beyond the door. Greet with a brightly lit hallway, Hugo notices that the interior is just as grand. Adorned with floral accents and antique, antique paintings, it excludes an elegant charm found only in a resplendent house such as this. However, Hugo notices something even more distinct than the splendor. This house is much more terrifying inside, inside than out. Please, come this way. Bracing themselves, they enter the dimly uh, lit drawing room. At first glance, Hugo could not discern the, the silhouette situated at the far corner. However, on closer inspection, he now understands the reason for all of Nina's unsettling vagueness. Grandfather, we have guests. Oh my god. Why he doesn't look old though? Sitting on... He's the grandfather, he's, but he's young. Sitting on the armchair is a young man. He is dressed in a white collared down dress shirt tucked in with black slacks and black penny loafers. Staring only at the window, the young man sits there dazed with little acknowledgement of the people around him. Still, motion, motionless, like a doll. Grandpa! Grandpa! These are the people I spoke of. This is Detective Laurent and his two assistants, Colby and Noah. They are going to help us. Henry. Even after introducing them to the head of the mortuary state, Hugo and Noah could not help but feel unnerved. The man before them is supposed to be frail and older than any of them, and yet he remains forever unchanging, forever young. They've come a long way, so I'll make him some coffee. Would you also like some, Grandpa? This is weird. The young man still does not reply back never glancing at Nina or anyone else in the room, only fixed on the rain. I'll be sure to make a cup for you too. She then timidly gestures to Hugo and Noah back to the fire, bearing more questions to, the, to follow Nina outside. But before they leave the drawing room, Hugo takes one last look at the young man. There is an all too familiar air about Henry Mortimer. His eyes, they are similar to his own. Whether he must be longing for, who God knows, it will not end well. Damn. Nina, that man. Yes, he's my grandfather, the one I ask you all to watch over. I know this is hard to believe, but Nina draws something out from her pocket. It's an antique picture of a young man with slick back hair wearing a luxurious cut. He appears to be poised and refined. A complete contrast to the current Henry Mortimer. This isn't much to go by, but I swear he is the same person. Then why does he look so young? It happened a few nights ago. It was on my way, way to get a cup of tea when I heard a loud thud coming from my grandfather's room. I was worried that something fell over, so I went to go and check. When I opened the door, I found him collapsed on the ground. I rushed to help him, but when I did, he looked so different. So many things were rushing to my head, and yet he felt so familiar to me. He wore the same clothes that my grandpa wore that night. In his face, I recognized his face. He just looked younger. What? That was also the same night I found that letter. It was next to him already opened. I'm sorry again for all of this. No matter who I went to, they either said something was wrong with me or my family. With everything going on, maybe they're right. The pool of water, the dripping sounds, the letter, and now this. Maybe my family is really cur cursed. They're not. Cursed. Curses aren't real. Detective? I think we, we easily get too involved in believing that sort of things exist. In reality, the ones who fixate on it feeds off. Rumors, doubts, lies, all of those things are what they want to become real. Deep-rooted emotions like that can possibly be healed or fixed right away. But like a curse, those emotions drag uh, other people down with them. Personally, I think you are caught up in all of this. But I assure you, we'll see this through. For you and your grandfather. Thank you. Good. Now our first priority is to find out more about Reeds. 
Nina, the letter you showed us back at the agency, do you have it with you? Ah, yes, it's here. Do you mind if I borrow it for a bit? I'll be sure to give it back. Of course. Okay. I'll check upstairs. Noah, you and Colby check the ground floor. Got it. Before they leave to do their own investigations, Hugo grabs a hold of Noah's shoulder. He leans in close enough for Nina to not hear. Keep a close eye on uh, Mr. Mortimer and Nina, especially Nina. Okay. I'm counting on you. You too, boy. Oh, the dog. And without Hugo heads upstairs, starting his investigations. Mortimer Estate, 11.30 p.m. Huh. Weird settings. After searching vigorously through each of the rooms, he knew his findings would eventually lead him here. This is it. Hugo walks toward the nearest uh, lampshade and opens it. Dimly illuminated, he sees the extent of how lavished uh, this part of the house is. From customized draper, uh, drapes to the vintage furniture, everything here uh, excuses the extravagance. But much like the interior Hugo has seen so far, he finds this one in particular reeks of it. Plaster from the wall to wall, a sense of gloom lingers. It's as if the room itself is mother moldering the spices preserved nature. I need to hurry, I don't want to stay here for too long. Mortimer Estate, 11.50 p.m. What did you find? He searches and searches still with no sign of anything. Not one thing pertaining to Louis. Damn it, nothing is ever... It's as if he cleared out everything, just blank everywhere. Oh, no, it has to be here. I'm just missing something. He ponders again before uh, remembering the letter. This is the only proof Louis exists so far. I tried to read it again. Maybe I overlooked it. As he takes the letter out from the envelope, he notices a change within. Bearing no forebonding threat at the bottom of the page, it looks just like a regular letter. Huh? What the... If you can come, then I understand. It's pretty dairy after all. Ah, but if I can ask one last favor of you, could you keep my locket? I know this is selfish of me, but I'd like for you to have it. I'd be happy knowing it's with you. Thank you for everything, Henry. Forever yours, Louis. What? This is the same Louis? I thought he, has the he was the cause of all of this. I don't understand. Without wording, the sound of a click can be heard across the bedroom, as if something unlocked itself. Hugo turns around and sees at the foot of the bed chest a chest. Unlike the other furniture, its dark and rustic feature features uh, have not been maintained well. Left to rot on its own. Preparing himself, he opens the chest. Inside, scrambled together are bunches of notebooks and small trinkets. Hugo continues to rummage through when he stumbles across an old newspaper article. Young man found dead by the lake. What? An unidentified young man was found on the morning of, three days prior to his death, according to police. Ruled out as a suicide, police have claimed that the troubled youth drowned himself. This certainly is a tragic loss, an unfortunate event indeed. No claim of his body has been made yet. Louis, by the corners of Hooders of Hugo's eyes, he spotted a bright gleam buried beneath the clutter. He reaches for it. <gasps> a locket of brilliant gold shines unblemished, retaining a timeliness luster. Inside it safeguards a pictures a picture of a young man with glasses smiling brightly. This must be the locket that he was talking about. It's so pretty. I'm surprised it still shines like this. And this picture, did he put this here? No, it might have been Henry. But why? Why would he store it away like this? What should I do? Take it. I should probably hon hold on to this for now. Hugo is about to put everything back into the chest when he feels a weight and cold sensation crawling up his leg. What? Water? A pool of water relentlessly spreads across the floor, already seeing into the chest. Damn it, no! Suddenly the lights shut off. 
A scream is heard followed by the myriad of shouts. Oh my god. Hugo is about to call out to Noah but stops at the sight of a pale field before him. <gasps> oh my god. Looming over him stands a tall and ominous figure. His face is shrouded in complete darkness, devoid of any human emotion. Oh my god. It appears... I, I didn't know this was a horror game, okay? It appears as a young man, but Hugo knows that he's far from it. No. This very thing is trying to intimidate the human... To Im imitate the human form. Trying to be human. Hugo could only stare back. Paralyzed with fear, he's forced to watch the horror as it slowly creeps towards him. <gasps> it's just like before, the sensation of someone staring at him from within. But this time, he's drawing nearer, itching over ever so closely. The words to call out to Colbert Noah fail to reach out. Lodging his throat, he struggles in pain. With his breathing shallow, he tries to force his body to move. <gasps> and then it stops. Oh my god. Looking down at Hugo, filled with nothing but malice and contempt, he speaks. Oh my god. Don't get what? I didn't see it. It says don't get something. All of a sudden the doors and bedrooms slam shut and the entity disappears. The tension from his body finally releases its agonizing grip and he gaps desperately for air. His vision blurred and breathing jagged. He's, he's staggered towards the door. He yanks at the handle several times, but it's slightly jammed. Freak! Noah! Colby! To his dismay, he is only greeted with silence on the other hand of the door. Damn it! From a distance, he faintly hears the sound of Colby relentless barking as it gets further away from the house. Hugo rushes towards the window. He tries to pry it open, but just like the door, a heavy force prevents him from doing so. Freak this! Frenetically looking around the room, he spots a nearby chair. Without a moment sooner, Hugo grabs the chair and starts to strike the window. Bit by bit, the window cracks get larger with each blow, splitting off smaller pieces. What the hell is this thing made of? Still trying to catch his breath, he masters all of the strength he has left for a final blow. Damn, you just break already! Clearing out the remaining glass shards, Hugo peers his head out to see any railing he can grab. However, he discovers instead that the world ascendant is covered in ivy. Despite how heavy the rain has drastically be become, he reaches out for it, grabbing a handful of the vines. Carefully, he climbs out the window, gripping tightly and making sure he doesn't lo lose his footing. Yet, to his luck, the patch of vines he clutches start to tear away from the wall. Out of desperation, he struggles to find his grip on another, but fails when his hand slips out of reach. Shit. Oh god. <laughs> Glamouring wildly as he loses his grip on the ivy, he crash lands down onto the thicket, thicket of bushes. Air force out of him, he uh, heaves uncontrollably, trying to even out his breathing. But even that is laborious, an imminent pain spread across not only his back, but his entire body. God, I'm getting too old for this. Although his body screams out in pain, he forces himself up. There is still time I can do this, I have to do this. With staggering feet and haggard breathing, he makes his way to the place where it all started. To the lake, where this tragedy starts and ends. Mortimer Estate, 12.01 a.m. <gasps> the lake. Finally, entering through the park, Hugo calls out the Colby and Noah. Colby, Noah, where are you? He hears faintly the sounds of barking and echoes of people yelling in the distance. He rushes towards the echoes, guiding him through the downpour. With his heart racing and blood rushing to his head, he finds his way to the lake. Drawing closer, he sees Nina giving chase to her grandfather. Unfortunately, she doesn't go too far as Noah stops her. Grandpa, stop! Grandpa, let me go! My grandpa, he's... Nina, please, it's dangerous. You'll get hurt too. 
I don't care. I, I don't want to lose anyone anymore. It's a death instant who got tragi uh, tragic against the water, pursuing in Nina's dead. Hugo? No, don't. Please falls deaf to his ears. Not even the wines, the wines and worried cries of his partner could make him turn back. Determined, he trudges further in. Nearing the deep end, he sees Henry Mortimer gazing directly at the abyss. He looks even more fla frail and dissolved as if all the life had been drained from him. Surrendering it all to the lake. Before Henry Colin in, Hugo reaches out and tugs at his arm. Mr. Mortimer, listen to me. Nothing is waiting for you down there, so please come back to the shore with me. Motion motionless and unresponsive, he still stares deeply into the water. There are so many things we cannot afford to lose in our lives. And you are one of them. To Nina, you are all she has left. She needs you, Mr. Mortimer. Hugo felt it, a slight jol jolt from Henry's arm. Uh, as if st steered by the mention of Nina. He slowly turns uh, to face Hugo. Nina. However, just as cruel and violent as the storm, Henry jerks back, wrenching his arm away from Hugo, hold on him. Henry, all of this is my fault. If only, if only I got to Louis sooner, then none of this would have happened. Henry itches even closer to the edge. Louis, I'm sorry. I should have... Should have what? Gone in his stead? Gone with him? You know that wouldn't resolve anything. Not for you or Louis. I... I read what he wrote to you those years ago. Huh? He understood if you didn't want to come see him. But the thing is, Mr. Mortimer, Louis never thought anything less of you. The locket is proof of that. Louis Lockett? Yes, it's the symbol of his love for you. That's why. You don't have to shoulder all of the pain by yourself anymore. We can talk about it. About you and Louis. All of it. Together. Hugo extends not only his hand to him, but a promise. A promise that Henry had yearned for so long. A way to forgive himself. He hesitates at first. What fool believes in a deserved forgiveness? Such a thing doesn't exist. And yet, despite everything, Hugo still reaches out to him. To a stranger. Maybe he can be forgiven. Just as he was about to reach out for Hugo, a hand slitters around Henry's tent. <gasps> no! Its arms unusually contoured around him, while its head perch uh, perches on his shoulder. This thing... This Louis is no longer pretending to be human. With piercing cold green eyes, it glares directly at Hugo, mocking him, cursing him, wishing nothing but despair. <gasps> we can be saved? We can be forgotten? What? There is only one true way out of this. I will share with you the most happiest. <gasps> Before Hugo could reach out for Henry Hand, he disappears into the water. Mr. Mortimer, without hearing the anguished cries and desperate pleas, Hugo dives after him into the abyss. 12.30 am, somewhere. Plugging into icy water, Hugo feels shocks running rampant throughout his body, like spice continuously piercing from his legs to the tips of his fingers. Fiercely and unhealing. I said that were so bad. I'm sorry. <laughs> his chest tightens and his heart races as he begins to kick his legs. Hoping whichever way he goes, he'll find his way to Henry. Swimming deeper and deeper in, he sees faintly a figure slowly descending into the darkness. As he finally gets closer to Henry, long snake-like arms stretch across the void and grabs Hugo's neck. Violent, violently squeezing all the air out from him. He tries desperately to wrench its hands away. But with each struggle, Hugo's movements begin to tie heavier and heavier. Louis is 
Where are you, Luis? He's looking for Luis. Digging deep into his coat pocket, he grabs tightly in his hands the locket that Henry kept and had long forgotten. Holding it out as it shines ever so brightly in the dark. Huh? What is that? There you are. It releases its grip on Hugo and instead reaches out for the locket. Taking this as a chance, he drops the chain and kicks with all his might to grab Henry's arm. With his heart burning and his body screaming, he swims desperately to the surface. Almost there. I just have to... As the light from the surface begins to blur, Hugo makes one last attempt to reach for it. With his limbs worn out and his energy spent, this is all he can do. Before he loses his conscien consciousness, he notices a figure swimming towards them, getting closer and closer, and then everything fades to black. Somewhere, sometime. Drifting along with what feels like an endlessly endless sea, Hugo curses through waves after wave, not knowing where he's going or caring for that matter. All he knows is that he's very, very tired. How long has it been since he had a good night rest? Ah, it's been too long. Maybe I should take that rest now. I like that so much. I agree that you deserve it, but not here. Huh? I'm sorry for startling you. I just wanted to see you before I go. Louis? You've done so much for me and Henry. Thank you. No worries. From a far off distance, a voice crawls out to him, beckoning for him to come back. Well, I guess this is it. Take care, Hugo. What happened? Lake? So he needed the 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 shining thing, the shining uh necklace? With his eyes closed and his sense still returning, he feels the constant tugs and leaks of a certain bloodhound. <laughs> Winning as he tries to wake up his partner, Hugo. He also hears another familiar voice, too annoyingly close for comfort. <gasps> eyes shut right open. He jerks up. Confused, Hugo looks around before he cogs up the remaining water in his lungs. Are you alright? Noah starts to pet his back while Colby continues to win her over Hugo. W what happened? Where's Mr. Mortimer? He's safe, so is Nina. They're both okay. The police and the ambulance should be arriving soon. Thank goodness. Isn't there more you have to say to me? Instead of thank goodness? I swear you don't listen to a damn word I say. Hmm. I'm sorry, Noah. Exhausted, he lets out a sigh. He then continues to pet who goes back aggressively when someone approaches them. Detective Laurent? Oh, Nina. There's someone I want you to meet. <gasps> Behind her stands an elderly man. Frail in stature, he timidly looks to the side, pensively as he ponders to himself. Although his youth has long faded, his eyes are what catches Hugo's attention. They are no longer a piercing and vicious grin, only eyes just like Nina's. Hello, Mr. Mortimer. Detective? He came back to what he was like. I never got the chance to say goodbye to him. I always thought about it every day. What if Louis lived on in this world? What if he stayed a little longer with me? It's because of that constant mindset I dragged everyone down. And I kept hurting not only me, but Nina especially. I was the one who kept hurting her, the one to blame for all of this. But you, some, someone that I've never met, still went out for your way to save me, not knowing my burdens or my faults. Thank you. Hugo reaches out to Henry and smiles brightly at him. It's my pleasure, sir. But before he lets go, Henry tucks a Hugo hands one last time. I hope that someday you two will overcome it. Huh? Huh? What? The next day. Well, good morning, Hugo. You're bright and early. Huh? <laughs> morning. <laughs> With much uh, fervor and haste, Hugo resumes writing on his notepad. Although by closer inspection, he looks like he's going combat to combust any time, any minute. 
are you writing up the report without looking up who got response back? Yeah, for the most part. You still need to write yours too? I will. But since I haven't had breakfast yet, and I don't like eating by myself, <gasps> the amazing breakfast. <laughs> nice. Let me guess. Two is better than one? Bingo. Wow, Hugo. You're really catching on. I'm so proud of you. Ah, shut it, will you? I swear if I only hadn't fallen, fallen off from the goddamn window, maybe my report would have been shorter. Before Noah could begin to cut the bacon, he pauses and mentions of Hugo's report. Oh yeah, by the way, mind telling me what happened to the Mortimer's window? Um, I broke it. Well, that's obvious to me. Well, what I don't understand is why is it broken? Do you know how much it costs to repair a window like that? I know, I know. I was really, it was really dumb of me. I'm sorry. Besides, I told Mr. Mortimer about it before we left. Honestly, I was expecting an earful from him. And also the bill. And? Surprisingly enough, he said it was okay. So what? You just call it a day after all of that? Thank you so much, Mr. Mortimer. You broke it, you pay for it. Would you chill? Of course I'll pay for it. But each time I kept insisting, he just shrugged it off. Said that we already went through a lot for them, so this was nothing in comparison. Oh, you know what? He's right. After all that we went through, I deserve at least a nap. Hugo puts down his pen and proceeds to head for the couch. Colby follows after him. Wait, what about breakfast? I'll eat it later. It's nap time now. Heavily uh, sacking, Noah sets aside the food on his desk and joins the other two at the couch. Oh, Oh, I'm getting old. <laughs> I mean, you are old. Shut it. Colby wines asking for head scratches. Ah, sorry boy. Slightly, Hugo scratches the back of Colby's ears as he leans closer to Noah. You know, I'm glad that you came along yesterday, huh? Oh, what's this? Wait. Let me... Let me move my camera first. Okay, good. So you can see the guys. <laughs> okay. Oh, what is this? Are you getting chummy with me now? Call it chummy or whatever, but I really mean it. If you hadn't saved us back there. Hmm. Look, I told you before, I'll be there whenever you get yourself into reckless shit. Besides, didn't you say this was nap time? Get some rest. You deserve it. I want some nap time too. You too. Aww. A calming silence fills the room as the tree fell deeper into sleep. No big parties or celebrations, just each other's comfort and sharing this small but rewarding night's rest. Good end. <gasps> A nice rest. I got the good end. So you, you can have the bad end. Bad ending. Probably if you don't take the necklace. Thank you for playing. You are welcome. It was nice. It was a cute story, actually. Uh, yeah, it was a cute story. I enjoyed this. It was, um, it was interesting to say the least. Especially when the grandpa like became, like you know, uh, young and stuff, and also with the. Uh, with the um, artwork of the ghost that that was pretty cool that was pretty nice so yeah i hope you guys enjoyed this if you did don't forget to leave a like to subscribe if you're new because it'll be so nice to have you here and as always i hope we can see you all on the next one bye